What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today once again I've got a bunch more Destiny 2 stuff that I want to talk about. Pretty much everything that's been going down in the past few days are worth being aware of and a few more things coming up soon for the game. So for the longest time there's been quite a lot of feedback from the community about a certain piece of content in this game and Bungie finally responded by simply removing it so we're going to talk about that. I also wanted to mention a new bonus reward that we're going to be getting inside an exotic quest soon. We also have some more details on this new and improved version of Season 3's Faction Rally which isn't happening when you think it might be and also some new gameplay features and as well as that some new exotic stuff and pretty crazy gear inside the game so of course a like rating would be much appreciated if you want to support this channel unless you're on the first topic so i think by far one of the most interesting things has happened recently is bungie's response and reaction to a lot of feedback or criticism to a certain piece of content in the game that content being the exodus crash strike on the fallen the guy that disappears all the time a lot of people mainly don't like how when you start doing damage and you kind of do pretty most fun part of a boss fight he just disappears and kind of cuts it short over the months since pretty much launched I've seen endless hate towards the strike and people saying they don't like it. Bungie needs to do something about it. So yeah, Bungie reacted in a very unexpected way. And like I said, they removed the strike from the game. Now, what I mean by that is they simply removed it from the Heroic Strike playlist. So on the Bungie Twitter, they said the Exodus Crash will be removed from Heroic Strike matchmaking next Tuesday with update 1.21. Teams are investigating changes for aspects of the strike and will provide additional information in the future. It's also safe to assume they're not going to feature it as a nightfall anytime soon either. So it is more or less has gone from the game so i want you guys to comment down below what do you think of this action what do you think of them removing it from the heroic strike playlist are you happy you're not bothered do you think something else they should have done and also just what did you think of the strike in general do you think it deserved to be removed now in terms of my opinions i honestly am pretty surprised by it they've never done this ever in destiny i mean obviously i knew the strike wasn't a favorite but i do think removing it is very very drastic and definitely unexpected i don't think i dislike the strike as much as a lot of people do personally i'm not too bothered by it i'm also pretty indifferent on them just removing it altogether although i do love the fallen and obviously the theme of the strike i never really looked forward to it and always thought oh yes this one with the disappearing boss is always pretty annoying and just kind of unsatisfying but i definitely don't hate it enough to back out when it pops up in the rotation which i know a lot of people actually do so we don't know how long it's going to be taken out for it could be a couple weeks could be a few months bungie did say they're not going to do any drastic overhauls and just change the entire strike it's still gonna be the same boss same settings same kind of features but the one thing they will be changing is of course his mechanics so the things people hate the most about it him disappearing and not taking so much damage those are obviously going to change quite a bit i have actually seen a small amount of people that are are actually pretty disappointed about it being taken out obviously the main thing is that it's a piece of content that came with destiny 2 they paid for it's one of the kind of pillars of strikes again let me know what you guys think of this are you bothered are you not bothered are you happy to see it gone and when we get some news about what's happening to it and when it returns i'll of course let you guys know on this channel so i wanted to talk about the nascent dawn quest the exotic quest line of course for polaris lance which has been a very long quest in itself and also very unexpected there's been quite a few surprises along the way and it seems there's going to be one more in addition to of course the exotic we're getting at the end of it even though we're not actually at the end of this quest line Anna Bray as it turns out does have another reward for us for set 4 out of 5. So for this step we're going to have to go and get precision multi kills without reloading and also kills with the prototype scout rifle the legendary version of the actual Polaris Lance. After that we're going to have to do a mission called Fury on Io which of course has you go into the Warmind vault there. This isn't actually a new mission or a quest line it is the same one from the campaign you might remember on Io where you go and fight the Taken inside the vault. After that you're going to have to go and open up one of those special sleeper nodes the ones outside the 40 and this one is right outside Rasputin's door. Now after that you're going to upload the memory to the fourth server and then Anna is going to have another reward for acquiring another one of her pre-collapsed logs. So it's a guessing game what this reward is going to be but the interesting thing is we've seen pretty much every single item in the database actually given to us already. As far as I can see every piece of weapon or armor and even emblems have been given to us. Obviously we have the legendary prototype and even the masterwork version last week and then next week is going to be the exotic itself. So there really aren't many possibilities of what this reward could be. I personally do think it's going to be one of the three items currently unaccounted for which are these three exotics i've mentioned these before so the very safe assumption is that one of these three items is the reward possibly the ship the stark baffler because it is of course rasputin kind of warmind themed it just seems a little bit more relevant to anna bray than the ghost and the sparrow and i also do think one of these items is going to be the strike specific loot reward when the zul strike is the nightfall it's not going to be another brazek weapon like the rocket launcher because again we've got them all so it is a guessing game out of these three items but it's safe to assume one of these is going to start dropping soon i know a lot of you guys since I first mentioned these exotics, really want to get them. So of course, I'll let you guys know when they do start dropping.
happening. Now, as for some news about Faction Rally, of course, the first one of season three with all the overhauls and changes, and it should be a pretty good one. Unfortunately, it actually isn't happening on Tuesday, May 29th with the update like we thought it would. Bungie, of course, put out the roadmap recently with the May 29th update 1.21, and they even called it the Rallies update. The first and one of the most notable things on Tuesday with this update is that Faction Rallies is getting improvement. So from that, everyone rightfully so assumed that Faction Rally would be launching on the Tuesday with the update. And of course, there's also an Iron Banner end. So it makes sense. But actually, that is not the case. So Cosmo, one of Bungie's community managers, said the changes are going into the client next week, but the event doesn't start until later. I kind of wish they're more specific on when it later is. And hopefully, it's going to be the following week. So June 5th, that'll be the same week as the Polaris Lance drops. So I think this roadmap could have been worded a bit better, maybe, because it definitely does imply that Faction Rallies is going to begin with the Faction Rallies update. But that is not the case, so we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to see this new and improved version of the event, and of course get those exclusive exotic ornaments, the emotes, and the catalyst as well. So some new additions for this Faction Rally we can see so far include some kind of system based around Renown. It is very strange, we don't know much about what it is, but essentially there are three new milestones for Faction Rally. So we have Faction Rallies, High Renown, Loot, a Lost Sector Cash with at least three stacks of Renown. Then there's another one, but Loot, a Lost Sector with five stacks of renown and then another one which is blank which you can't see what the objective is there's also some kind of brand new item which is very strange you can see right here for some reason this item looks familiar i feel like i've seen it before in the campaign somewhere but this anyway is a new item called renown which was recently added for warmind and obviously the new season three of faction rallies and its description is your bravery has brought attention from both friends and enemies so this is an item that goes into your inventory and it has a max stack size of five so you can get a maximum of five of these things which of course makes sense for the milestone you can just get these from somewhere and it'll kind of increase your rewards or let you do this milestone. But yeah, of course, when Bungie do actually reveal when this faction rally is, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. So moving on, I also want to show you guys possibly one of the best exotics, in my opinion, in the entire Warmind DLC. So we're going to head over to our boy, Zer, of course, the best way to get all exotics. He's got pretty much the sweaty PvP apart from this thing. This is like your sweaty crucible just dream right here. This thing is definitely the odd one out. It's not that great. But this thing, however, of course, is a new exotic R piece with Warmind. The Sanguine Alchemy sounds like a cocktail, but it is a very, very, very good chest piece. Also probably should grab this thing, my fated engram, guaranteed to give me something I don't have, which should be an armor piece, I think I've got all the weapons. Apotheosis Veil. I mean, it's decent, it does a thing, but I don't think it's quite as good as some of the other Warlock exotics, like the Ophidians, or especially this one. All right, so I found a Lost Sector to demonstrate its perk and what it actually does. Now, to be completely honest, in PvE, these are complete trash. They're useless. This chest piece was definitely not designed for PvE at all. So you can basically plop down a rift like this, and any high priority target is going to be marked. So you can see the major dude over there, which is the boss of the Lost Sector. He is marked, and I can see him live, what he's doing. But obviously, this is completely useless. Like, there's no need for information. All these other dudes though were obviously invisible so i can't see what they're doing it only works on i'm pretty sure majors or high health or high level enemies i'm not exactly sure what constitutes but either way don't look at this thing for pve content however though where these become possibly the most broken exotic in the entire game just incredibly powerful is inside the crucible the interesting thing is that it says high priority targets but in the crucible everyone is a high priority target so everyone gets marked and of course the more enemies there are the better it's going to be so 6v6 iron banner there's more enemies and you've got more people to see so let's see just how broken this thing Thing really is now i'm pretty sure this also works for any of your teammates as well so i'm gonna put this right here although someone should be ready i'm pretty sure my teammates need to stand in it as well though so they're not gonna get the benefit but currently i can see one dude i can see anyone else i think it's within a 20 or 30 meter radius i can basically see these guys live real time it's not even like a like an updated thing just real time i can watch them and also you notice there even when they step out of the radius they still get tracked. So if you step in it, even if you back out of the radius, you really cannot defend against it. If you, if you just leave and no longer want to get tracked, you still get tracked anyway. Also, I'm pretty sure there's no notification for them of when they're being tracked. So it's not like the faux tracer, the hunter helmet, where I believe it says tracked and you can actually see, okay, this guy knows where I am. I should probably move away. Speaking of moving away, I should do that right now. I guess you need to pay really close attention to who's actually holding the chest piece, who's using it. And then if you see someone, know that if they're in a rift, you're being spotted at all times, basically. And it's also not just the person, their teammates, anyone can step in it and also get the same information, which is, again, pretty crazy him down a lot of hunters in this game right now hunters everywhere they're all jumping a lot and doing very aggressive things it's a pretty strange thing for a warlock to have as well it's not the kind of thing normally you see on a hunter i guess let's plop this right about here i should be able to see right one dude and another guy there he doesn't see me so i'm gonna leave him yeah i can just see you can see the range of this thing come on come back 
I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he knows he's being tracked and he's moved away. Because I don't even engage him. But I feel like he probably knew because I hardly even shot him. And he ran straight away from me. So I think he's doing the smart thing, which is just not, not engage someone like me. Can you see? This chest piece being used. Uh oh. I mean, the downsides are that you, of course, have to stay inside the rift. So you can't just like pop and then go chase someone and like follow people around corners like Foe Tracer can. That's a dude. Ah, oh, you got me anyway. I guess this is what happens when you solo queue into Iron Banner. It's one of the risks you take. Don't run from me, Hunter. There you go. I guess another skill set is learning the best places to actually use these things. So you can't just put it in the middle of nowhere, no cover. There's a lot of mans in there. That guy's one shot. Oh, that's so annoying. He is so weak. I don't have a nade to follow him with. Yeah, I'm dead. Where's this hunter gone? Show yourself. I'm just gonna put this down here. And this should. Oh, he's tether. I can see him there. And I can see him li live in real time. Yep, yeah, he's chilling. I wonder if he knows what the alchemy is. He's coming around now. And he's too far away. Yeah, definitely not the best of games. Solo matchmaking is fun. But yeah, just wanted to quickly demonstrate what the exotic does and why it is so, so good. If for whatever reason you don't have this yet, then head to IO, get to Zer, and go pick the thing up. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did and want to support this channel, then a like rating down below is always much appreciated. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on my future videos, then of course you can hit the subscribe button and that will keep you up to date. And then on top of that, you can click this image on screen right now to be taken to one of my recent Destiny 2 videos. So as always, I appreciate Appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you all in the next one.